an excellent first quarter final for us this evening. And the same result as the All England final with Jiang Yenar and Lee So Hee beating the Olympic silver medalist. Men's doubles is next. And as with the women's doubles, it is a repeat of the All England final. And it is the new world number ones against the former world number ones. And I should think with Gideon and Sukumolio having won the All England and won the India Super Series last week. So all the Super Series events we've had so far to lose their number one spot to their opponents of today. Well, I wonder if that's riled them. I think we're about to find out. I think this could be fairly spicy men's doubles. Of course, after that, we'll have women's singles and two former champions here. Of course, last year's champion and then the champion, uh, uh, Carolina Marin, from both the last World Championships and the Olympic Games. And then we have mixed doubles after that, and we'll finish with men's singles. So as far as the men's doubles draw is concerned, only five different nations, only four seeds left. Only one seed left in the top half of the draw, and that's Chai Biao and Hong Wei, who were beaten finalists here last year. In the bottom half of the draw, of course, we're going to look at the third quarter there, the number two seeds, Kimura and Sonoda. And three Chinese pairs at quarter-final stage, two Thailand pairs. It must be a long time since we've had two Thailand pairs in the quarter-final stage of the uh, Super Series men's doubles. But here come the players for our next match. It's the Chinese combination that took over as world number ones at one o'clock Malaysian time yesterday the former world number ones who had only been world number ones for three weeks down pushed down to number two in the world ranking now many people will find that difficult to understand but we explained it all carefully last week that it is only the best 10 results from all your tournaments in the previous 12 month period and that counts towards your world ranking so if you drop off some bad results and you've got a, a much better result to replace as one of those 10 best that's how you can move up above opponents who win the last tournament well, there's no doubting the height differences there. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great shot, wasn't it, of the tall Chinese players. There's Kevin Sanjaya Sukumolio. He is the player that is really causing all the headlines in World Badminton because he's so fast and he's so dynamic on court. But here is Li Chunhui. He'll turn 22 next month, and he is a tall man, isn't he? 195, that's six foot five, and up four places in the world ranking yesterday to become world number ones. Now, last year, uh, they lost here in Malaysia in the very first round, lost to the number two seeds, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setia won. So uh, they will have better points from last year's Malaysian to count towards their world ranking. Liu Yu Chen, he is also 21 years of age, born in Beijing. And apart from reaching the final of the All England Championships, they reached the semi final in India. Now they had uh, a very convincing opening match, didn't they? Only 22 minutes. And then yesterday, what a thriller against Alfian and Adianto. Uh, they had actually been way, way down in that opening game. I know they lost the opening game, but it was 7-16 down. They made a terrible start to the match. It's not how you start, it's how you finish that really counts. So as far as the number four seeds are concerned, Marcos Fernaldi Gideon turned 26 last month. He and his partner are contesting their first quarterfinal here in their third appearance at the Malaysian Open. Two previous tournaments this year, two titles. That is very, very impressive. The All England and India last week. And they've been impressive in their matches so far as well. 24 minutes for their Ready? opening match. And then against Liu Cheng and the Olympic champion Jiang Nan 
If you were with us yesterday, you will have enjoyed that one. It was fast and furious, but it was only 34 minutes in duration. Now, this will be the third meeting between these two pairs. The last meeting was that All England final we were talking about. And two straight games, as you can see, in only 35 minutes. So our umpire from Thailand, Jitorut Tanukarapat, and Tio Kianju of Malaysia, our service judge. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Li Junhui and Liu Yushun, China. And on my left, Kevin Sanjaya Komojo and Marcus Fernandi Kiedon, Indonesia. <laughs> Lee Chun Hui to serve Marcus Fernandi Kiedon. Love all, play. So the world number ones, the tall pair nearest to us with blue shirts and Chen for now the Gideon it's his second quarter final at this particular event the Malaysian Open because three years ago he was in the quarter with Marcus Kido so it's over one two creative shot there from uh, Kevin Sukamulio You know, in my own mind, I mean, I, I love watching the Indonesians because they are dynamic and they're extroverts, especially Sukumolio. And but I sort of feel, is the bubble about to burst? You know, they're this, they're. I don't know whether they've got the consistency yet or not. I, I mean, it's too early to judge. But you know, you sort of think, and you, oh, we've already talked about the fact that players coming from India have struggled. Uh, the beaten finalists from last week in India, they lost in the first round, as indeed did one of the semi-finalists in this men's doubles discipline. Yeah. It's tough. It is tough. Um, they, they, they look, Gideon and, and uh, Sukumudu, they look as if they're having fun on court. And, yeah. and they are very young, um, if not uh, of age, then to the uh, top level on the circuit. So I think that um, they have a lot of, uh, of hunger still. Yeah. But of course, there will be days when you're not as, um, as uh, fit and alert as, as other days. And it's finding a way to win when you have those days. Yeah. And we've seen that um, Kevin Sukumulio hasn't started out as dominant um, today as the other days. No. the fifth mistake or something like that. fourth Nine, or fifth mistake three. by uh, 
Sukumulu. Um, it, it doesn't matter as much as with everybody else because he also creates a lot of points, like that one, for instance. He creates quick points as well, so he's allowed to make more mistakes because he makes more winners as well. If you don't make a lot of winners, you can't afford to make a whole lot of mistakes. Nine. from Chen. Love it, oh, a six point advantage, my goodness me. Is that right? Is it really only yeah. under f five minutes? Yeah. Oh, that's extraordinary. I said it was quick. When it's all happening in double quick time like this, Steen, as a coach, what, what do you say to players? And uh, this is a very different scenario from the men's doubles pairs, I think, that you've coached at uh, yeah. the very elite level because the Indonesians want to play quickly. Because I, I, as soon as I was asking the question, I thought that's a dumb question because <laughs> I, I know that Steen would ask them to slow it down. But the Indonesians want to play quickly. They want to play, so they, they need to, to step up. Um, it's about uh, uh, sort of encouraging them and, and uh, get it, getting themselves a little bit fired up. I, th I think maybe they're a little bit uh, content. And there's also this, I, I was thinking, they, they, um, the Chinese pair won the coin toss, and um, they chose to start on this side here. So this challenge. Yeah, challenge here. So are the Indonesians just sort of playing themselves into the match and say, OK, we're going to take the second game and then we have one half game on this side of the court here, which is a little bit harder to play on than the near side of the court. And I wouldn't put it past the Indonesians to use that thought process, to be honest. No, neither would I. Now, what does Hawkeye say? says it was clearly out. Challenge and subset move. Well, five, play. It's gone long. Service over, six, twelve. Get in. Oh, a little bit of a discrepancy here. Chinese want to change the shuffle, the Indonesians say no. It's all psychological games. Yeah. Oh. Service for called. Struck above the waist on Gideon. So it's over. Yeah, his left arm goes up Six. there. I can only agree with the uh, service judge. Well, certainly the Chinese combination have made a much better start to today's match than that is yeah. yesterday's match. They were just completely off the pace against the young Indonesian pair of Alfian and Adianto. Miles down in the open game. They made a decent score of it in the end, but well, they've learned from the mistake there. They started sharply today. 
And, and also, uh, they're probably looking forward to this match because they lost the All England final. So you want to have a chance of getting back at the, at the opponents as, as quickly as possible. And, and I mean, when you lose, you can learn more from going home, watching the video than you can when you, when you win the match. But uh, they haven't been at the same level we've seen them um, in the other two tournaments this year. Uh, so far in the first game, Gideon and um, Sukumulio. Interesting to see in the second game whether they step up. Sunday, doesn't it? Yeah. This is not what I was expecting at all. Fuck game. Twenty one seven. Fuck game one by the fraction over ten Alan minutes. Twenty one seven. And with a break of one minute. Yeah. Or do, or do they only count actual playing time? No, it's duration no. of the match. Second game. Well, for all Love those neutrals, play. I hope this second game is much tighter in score and more rallies. the sort of thing they were doing in the All England final, isn't it? Yeah, 
Yes. There's no call here, but you can see Gideon's left arm is going up right when he's serving. This time a service error instead of a service fault. Good shot, Liu Yu Chen. Virtually no backswing of the racket. Look at that. Twice he did that. Yeah. Just it's also very, very um, revealing about the Indonesian's tactical uh, mindset because Kevin Sanjay was moving all the way to the first white line on his own court. So there were two players covering the net in the previous rally. Well, you remember my com comment about the bubble bursting? Yeah, I do. I didn't believe it back then. But, uh, <laughs> and so far it's been one-sided. And when you play that game yeah. against the Lee and Liu, then you're going to get punished because they're both very, very powerful um, attacking players from the backcourt. Good rally. Interesting also that the Chinese players tried to play their defense as flat as possible. They didn't try to get it all the way back. And of course, uh, partly due to the wind conditions uh, here in the stadium, but I also think you know, if you're good in fast with your weapon in the flat game yourself, it might be a good um, uh, strategy to uh, sort of uh, neutralize uh, the Indonesians when they're a little bit off their game. service. Oh, good flex serve. Oh, it's long. Service over. Nine, six. Oh, just, that was close, wasn't it? By a whisker.
So it was a couple of quick points there in the Chinese, uh, sorry, the Indonesians, they're back in it. Good work. Service over 10, 8. No, well, challenging. Sharon, challenge for you. I thought that looked in to me. Well, it certainly did in the actual live rally. Yeah. So the one minute interval only begins now. So there's Sarah. So it's over nine eleven. No, oh, that's clever. <laughs> After remarkable reactions. Oh, he's done it again. <laughs> that crouch defence. Previous one was a little hold and flick over his opponent's head. That one ended up being the perfect net shot. Look at that. They're going to target the, the backhand side of the Chinese pair. Very, very often used tactic by the Indonesian men's doubles pairs to play everything towards the backhand side, especially from your own backhand side. Play cross back. Really, really hard to do anything about. Oh, no service short. Goes down as a service error. How many is that for the Indonesians? Gideon had served an error, didn't he? Yeah, three. He's alert. Li Junhui, he's very, very alert at the net. He knows that Sukumulu is trying to challenge when he's on the front court.
Very, very focused on the short service uh, marks for now, Licky Young. Skies on that reverse slice, keeping it straight. Good to serve. Gets to practice his defense, Gideon. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a rally. Well, that is absolutely amazing. Well, with these fast conditions and still the Chinese combination, the world number ones couldn't get the shuttle down. Oh, clearly the longest rally of the match so far. Oh, that's the sort of rally I was hoping for from the start. Just one point in it now. Uh, he broke his racket, uh, Lee Jun Hui. It's difficult to, to win the flat game with a broken racket. There it's gone. He yeah, gets two shots, three shots back. Yeah. When you said that, I hadn't realized the whole frame had gone. Yeah. Oh, my goodness me, how on earth did he get any back? Surely that low serve was going to land short. Yeah. But he was fully committed to the return, wasn't he? Totally. And the thing now is that the Indonesians, they haven't really played that well, but they're still very much in it. Yeah. It's gone long. And the Indonesians go into the lead.
Yeah, a whole different body language now yeah. from the Indonesians. Two point advantage and just two points away from taking this second game. Once again, disagreement as to whether the shuttle should be changed or not. Was it? Was it before the match got underway, before the players came out? This should be spicy. We were hoping it was going to be. Well played. On a run of six straight points. From 14 17 down. They have three game point opportunities. Oh, that's unbelievable. It's going wide. wide. It's one game all, seven straight points to close out the second game. Oh, my goodness me, they left that late, didn't they? 21-17, only 30 minutes into the match, and it's one game all. Look at that shot. How did he control that? Well, suddenly, they came alive. Suddenly it all started to work for the Indonesians. And their reward, one game apiece. and targeted Gideon in uh, the defense, but couldn't get the job done. That sort of started the comeback. Yeah. Game-changing rally. Camolio, <laughs> a shot there. Yeah. I thought it had already gone past him. I thought he should leave it for his partner. I think it's this one here. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, it's always much easier to be us than sitting up here and yes. seeing everything in hindsight. But should the Chinese have targeted Sukumulio a little bit more in the uh, later part of the uh, second game? Because the opportunities that comes for the Chinese players when Sukumulio is not playing well are much bigger than the ones from Gideon, who's the more uh, reliant, the more stable player. Lovely play from Li Yu Shen. Look at that. Super.
has come down from a very, very steep height. like a repeat of the first game here yeah with the Chinese dominance and it's a little bit surprising to me that they can sort of get this advantage in the service situation I really thought the uh, Indonesian pair would have the advantage there And I'm really not sure that the Indonesians can allow the Chinese to have too much of a lead at the change of ends. No, but then again, they had a, they had a quite big lead as well in, in um, the start of the second game, and, and then suddenly it was closed. The gap. Zhang hey. Chun, Chinese coach. with my read that today it's uh, Sukumulio who should um, be targeted when you're in good position. Hey! I think the opportunities that you get from targeting him is much bigger than the ones from uh, Marcus Gideon. gets a certain spark of uh, confidence, Sukumulio. Yeah, the umpire not happy. Oh. It's taking so long in between points. Reminds me a lot about Sigit Budiato, uh, yes. Kevin Sukumoyo. Yeah. He was a fantastic player when he was playing well, but um, he had his days where mistakes crept in. Used to play with Chandra Vijaya. Yeah. where I wouldn't recommend targeting Sukumulu if you're below in the in the rally so to speak if you're down below the tape and, and um, not able to control anything in the rally then it's really really uh, dangerous yeah. good change of pace Point advantage for the number five seeds, Li Junhui and Yu Chen at the change of ends here in the deciding game. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. What a super final shot from Liu Yuchen. Only 40 minutes in duration, the match. That was lucky. <laughs> well, it goes down as a service error. It got deflected by the net cord. I think Gideon just completely missed it, didn't yeah. he? And it landed short. Section. It's that instinctive awareness. I don't know whether a player actually looks to see how the opponent is defending, or is it instinctive that you know that yeah, they've committed one side? Yeah, I think it's a lot of um, instinct yeah. that you're relying on. I mean, I mean, it takes a lot of um, video study to learn it. Mm. The swagger is back. Tense now. Fast and furious exchanges. The body language after that error from Li Chun Kuei. If you're a Chinese fan, that would be concerning. 
That could be a costly error. Above the tape, like here, the Chinese pair, they definitely benefit from targeting the man in the picture, Kevin Sukamulio, because he's not where he was at the All England. No. Whereas uh, Gideon is uh, is quite solid in his game. And he's the one who's keeping the Indonesians in this match. It might well be that. Sukumulu will decide it if, if the Indonesians are to win it, but it's due to Gideon giving them in the match. Well played by uh, Lee and Liu. They're very alert, maintaining the initiative. Just one point in it. And back level. Well, I did really wonder when the Indonesians had left it too late. Similar situation as in the second game, just um, one point earlier. Yeah. 16 13 this time. So, can he take five more serves? Marcus Fernaldi Gideon here. Oh. Took seven straight in uh, the end of the second game. It's great to watch. Goodness me. 
Oh, that's a second service error from him. Once again, deflected by the net court. It's amazing. Challenge player not satisfied with the service judge. Point opportunities for Gideon and Sukamolio. Yeah, they've done it, would you believe it? From both second and third games from a 13-16 deficit. They close it out to 17. Well, the Chinese, yes, they are desperately unhappy that some of the serves were not called as a fault. Well, I thought in the very early stages, and I verbalised that I thought that maybe the bubble had burst with the Indonesians, who still have not lost a match this year. All matches played in international competition have been won and they had to come from a disastrous opening game where the Chinese pair were simply brilliant coming back from that and then 13-16 down as I say in that second game and again as 13-16 down in the decider that second game as Steam was pointing out from 14-17 7 straight points so safely through to the semi-final the Indonesians Gideon and Sulkamolio What a couple of thrillers we've had for our first two quarterfinals, both of them going the full distance, going to three games, and both of those first two matches repeats of the All England finals. Uh, quarterfinal stage here in Kuching. Next up is women's singles and the defending champion against the former champion, Rachinuk Intanon, up against the world and Olympic champion, Carolina Marin. Then we'll have mixed doubles after that, and more Olympic gold medalists with Ahmad and Nasir. They're also defending champions of the Malaysian Open title. And then we finish with men's singles. And Lin Dan, this is one of the few major titles that he's never won. He's been in three finals, but never won the Malaysian Open. He's up against the 19-year-old Jonathan Christie, who was semi-finalist last year as a qualifier. 
So as far as the women's singles draw is concerned, by quarterfinal stage, we had six different nations and six seeds. In fact, we lost two seeds in the first round. Last week's winner, Pusala Venkata Sindhu, number six seed, lost in the first round. Her Bing Xiao, the number eight seed, who won two Super Series titles last year. She lost in the first round, as did the former world number one, Saina Nawal. So it meant by quarterfinal stage, only six seeds. And in that top half of the draw, Tai Su Ying, coming through an absolute thriller there against the reigning world junior champion. So we're concentrating on the very bottom quarter of the draw. And here comes the defending champion, Arachino Kintanon, followed by the left-handed Carolina Marin, a winner of this title two years ago. So between these two players, they have won the last three World Championship gold medals. They've won the last two titles here at the Malaysian Open.